Section A of paper one is natural hazards. And the key thing you need to understand here is the difference between an event, a hazard, and a disaster. Natural events are events that happen and affect no one. Natural hazards are uh, natural events that happen and put people at risk. A disaster is when people are at risk and are vulnerable to that risk and therefore die. So what's natural in there is the hazard and the event. The disaster is never natural. It's always due to man, man-made man er errors or mistake. Okay. Um, so natural types, there's different types of hazards, sorry. One of them is uh, what we call hydrometeorological. So flooding is to do with water and then say drought or blizzard is to do with the atmosphere. They're types of hydrometeorological hazards, whereas geological hazards and tectonic hazards are to do with landslide, avalanches, volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. Okay, factors that in affect the level of risk. Urbanization increases the risk because there's more people uh, in harm's way. Climate change makes some ex uh, uh, hazards more extreme like droughts and tr tropical storms. Farming is a, means people are in areas that are more prone to flooding, therefore are more likely to be in harm's way. And poverty. People who don't have the resources can't necessarily get themselves out of harm's way. They're more vulnerable. Okay. And the causes of hazards, well, there's uh, one of them. You, you need to learn about uh, continental drift uh, that occurs due to convection currents, which is hot, air, hot magma rises. Uh, it, as it rises, it cools, and as it cools, it sinks back down. And that circular motion in the mantle causes continents above it to uh, on the crust to move. There's also a uh, more more understood theory now of slab pull theory, which is as a destructive fate meets. Uh, the oceanic crust that sinks into the mantle or subducts into the mantle, the force of gravity pulls it downwards, which pulls the rest of the plate down with it. Okay, there are two theories you need to understand. You also need to understand that well, the Earth is divided into four layers. Uh, there's two types of crusts, and there's four different ways in which tectonic plate boundaries meet. Okay, they're all down there. Um, I'm not going to go through them all as part of your lesson. You need to know those. Okay, um, the two examples, they're not case studies because you only spend less on them. Case studies are when you spend more than one lesson. They're just example of a uh, tectonic hazard you need to know. In red and green, we do Nepal and Laquila. So the Gorka earthquake of Nepal, low income, high income country, Laquila in Italy. In Nepal, 2015, 7.9 Richter scale, 50 kilometers away from the capital city of Kathmandu. Uh, one million people, uh, one million homes destroyed, 7,000 um, schools destroyed. Uh, collision of the uh, collision boundary of the Eurasian and Indian plate. Secondary impact, 20,000 injured, 9,000 deaths. It's controversial, but I do not see deaths and injury as a primary impact because people just don't, they always die and get injured because of something like a building collapsing on them, a school getting destroyed, a landslide, etc. Okay, it's not direct, they don't so, topple over when the ground shakes, they usually get crushed by falling building. Immediate response, um, well, emergency aid arrived really quickly from the UK and the US, Fifth, half a million tents were provided for the homeless people, long term, roads were repaired, landslides were cleared, all 7,000 schools were rebuilt in uh, Nepal, okay? Um, in Italy, in 2009, uh, it was a weak earthquake, um, it's 6.3 on the MMS scale or 5.9 on the Richter scale, causes destructive plate boundary, African plate, subducting underneath the Eurasian plate, the university and San Salvador uh, hospital were damaged, 300 deaths, 1,500 injuries, immediate response, train operators offered sleeping car carriages for the homeless, telecom companies opened free service for people to contact, support and emergency and uh, families, long-term aid, mortgages and taxes were suspended for residents, half a, uh, half a billion pounds were given by the EU to help Italy reconstruct, okay? The way in which we can manage uh, tectonic hazards, well, one of them is um, there's a reason people live in a harm's way. Uh, they're, not, they're not idiots. They live there because a family, they might have family, that, they live there because... Um, they uh, might have jobs there. If you're a volcanologist, you're not you're going to have to live somewhere dangerous. Uh, they live there because they don't necessarily understand the risk. They live there because sometimes there's fertile soil around flooding, around um, the truck, uh, around volcanoes. They live there because they don't have the means to move. Okay, that's a big, big, big one there. Um, land is cheaper in areas of risk because of the risk. Um, what we can do to reduce the risk is we can uh, predict and monitor. We can use um, seismographs. We can use animal behavior, although that's not scientifically proven. We can use past data. We can use weather forecasting, etc. The downside is is the prediction. We don't know for sure. You can also protect and plan. Okay, you can build earthquake-proof buildings like the pyramid shape in San Francisco uh, or Seattle. I can't remember which city it was. Uh, the best example of an old earthquake-proof building, probably the best examples in the world, is a forbidden city in Beijing. Incre it's gone through. It's survived so many earthquakes. Um, you can give people emergency kits. Have a evacuation routes, edu edu educational campaign. You can um, you can have a, a good quality emergency services, early warning systems and the like. Okay, so usually the nine mark question is either about comparing low and high income country earthquake or a nine market on how we might reduce the risk. And there you have to compare prediction, protection, planning. Okay, I hope that helps.